Here's why the Golden State Warriors are the most interesting team this offseason. The Golden State Warriors dynasty will go down as one of the greatest NBA dynasties in NBA history. One can only marvel at what the Warriors have been able to produce on the court to draft Stephen Curry at pick 7, Klay Thompson at pick 11, and Draymond Green at pick 35 only demonstrates how great the management is for this team. They didn't look to trade or free agency to win a championship in 2015. They made a so-called Big 3 using only draft picks, which is a very rare thing to do in the modern NBA. But when they have looked at free agency and the offseason, they've also proved they can find the right pieces to fit the puzzle and make them click. It's not just about Kevin Durant in 2016, but even underrated pieces like Andrew Bogut, David Lee, Sean Livingston, and of course, Andre Iguodala, who played a huge role in the Warriors' success and won a Finals MVP. But now it's a new phase, a new time in a new decade. The Golden State Warriors are somewhat transitioning, and let's talk about it and break it all down. The video will look somewhat like this. I'll break down the Warriors' season and their current list, then I'll look at the trades they've made this season, then I'll go into the off-season with the draft pick they currently have, and some potential trades, which include draft picks like James Wiseman, LaMelo Ball, and a few possible trades they can make for All-Stars this season, and the potential trades they can make next season, which I'll look at Ben Simmons, and we'll break it all down. Before I begin, I just want to quickly say that obviously because of the NBA season being suspended, there are a few teams that aren't in the NBA playoff run and aren't going to Orlando, such as the Golden State Warriors, the Chicago Bulls, Atlanta Hawks, all the teams that didn't make the playoffs or aren't in the playoff picture. So obviously for the teams that aren't playing anymore, would you guys like to see a series where I break down each individual team that isn't in the playoff run and we can go through what's next for these teams? Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you enjoy these videos, I really appreciate it if you guys could hit that like button. It takes one second of your time and let's aim for 2000 likes for the next video. If you enjoy NBA content every single week, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification button so you never miss an upload. And that's basically it. Let's get it started. The 2020 season, a breakdown. If you're a Golden State Warriors fan, you're probably looking to forget this season, and not only this season, but last season too. Obviously last season they were the favourites and had the ability to win an NBA championship once again. Of course, the injury curse just hit them at the wrong time. It's rare that two stars on one team can be injured at once, but to have it happen two seasons in a row is just super unfortunate. It can be argued that it cost them an NBA championship last season and a playoff berth this season. But what's interesting about the Golden State Warriors this season was the trades they were able to make. They traded for D'Angelo Russell at the start of the season when many expected they'd get nothing for the departure of Kevin Durant. So to end up with an asset like D'Angelo Russell was seen as an A-plus move this offseason. Although a weird fit, we all knew that he was an asset that the Golden State Warriors could look to move in the future, which they did. Andrew Wiggins was the replacement for D'Angelo Russell and he became a Warrior this season too. A far better fit for the Golden State Warriors who lacked wing players but has proven that he isn't as great of a player as D'Angelo Russell has become as obviously he's not become an all-star just yet. But either way he was a far better fit for the Golden State Warriors who lacked wing players with the loss of Kevin Durant and Andre Iguodala. And it was about time for Wiggins, a former number one draft pick, to find a new home and recharge his NBA career. When you try and figure out if it was a success or a failure in acquiring D'Angelo Russell and then trading him on for Andrew Wiggins and his massive contract, it's a valid question. But as of now, it really doesn't matter if it was a success or a failure because we haven't seen Wiggins paired up with Steph, Clay, and Draymond together. And that's what makes next year so enticing. So an even bigger question remains. What is next for the Golden State Warriors now? Are they good enough to still compete and win an NBA championship? It will be the first time the Golden State Warriors will contend for a championship without Kevin Durant since 2016, and this will make it a five-year gap, which is a long time in basketball terms. The Lakers now have LeBron and Anthony Davis. The Clippers now have Kawhi and Paul George. The Houston Rockets have James Harden and Russell Westbrook. A lot has changed for the Golden State Warriors when they look to win an NBA championship next season. But obviously, they still have the big three that has proven to win an NBA championship, and that's what makes it very interesting next season. The offseason for the Golden State Warriors will be one of the more interesting offseasons they've had in a very long time. In fact, since 2016 when they signed Kevin Durant. This season, they will not be signing any star player though. And rather, this offseason will come from the 2020 NBA draft, with a very high draft pick. 
What they will do with this pick is the big question. Do they pair it up with Wiggins and a future first round pick and try and acquire an all-star? Do they look to get the best player possible in the draft? And depending on where they may have their pick, that could be Lamelo Ball. Do they draft the player that is best fit, possibly a James Wiseman, a center that is a big body, which is the position that they need to fill right now above anything else? At the end of the day, no one knows the answers to the questions, but let's look at some possible scenarios. The potential trades this offseason for the Golden State Warriors. We know that some team in the Eastern Conference will be disappointed. Whether it's Giannis and the Bucks or Ben Simmons and the 76ers, someone will miss out on a trip to the NBA Finals and possibly the Eastern Conference Finals. The Warriors have obviously been heavily targeting Giannis for a few seasons now, but it seems too early right now to suggest that he demand a trade from the Bucks just one season away from his free agency decision in 2021. But if they do not make the Eastern Conference Finals or the NBA Finals, the Bucks may have a decision on their hands. But you'd assume with a star player like Giannis, the Bucks will hold on to him. Which leaves a really valid question for the Philadelphia 76ers and what they will do. I would not be at all surprised if Ben Simmons was on the move or Joel Embiid was on the move this season via a trade. The 76ers are a really intriguing team on paper. They have a very solid roster, but are a very disappointing team this season. They also couldn't make it work last season with Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris, Ben Simmons, and Joel Embiid, and now they've transitioned into Josh Richardson, Al Horford, kept Tobias Harris, Ben Simmons, and Joel Embiid, and at one point or another, the team will have to split up if they're not working. I'm not saying that's this season, but eventually, enough becomes enough, and the duo of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid is nice, but it hasn't really clicked as well as we'd like to see it happen, simply because of how each other play. If this season sees the 76ers eliminated once again in the second round, I would not be surprised if a move is made for either Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid. Ben Simmons needs the space to drive in and finish around the rim or kick it open to shooters, whereas Embiid needs the space inside to post up and go to work. Neither is able to do fully what they need to do because of the other. One of them or both of them needs to improve on their outside game in order to be as effective as possible and maybe by the time it happens, it'll be too late. Ben Simmons, in my opinion, would be the perfect player for the Golden State Warriors. Spacing, after all, is everything. If he plays alongside Klay Thompson and Stephen Curry, two of the game's greatest shooters in NBA history, that is as much space as he'd ever get in the NBA. You can't double him because you'd be leaving shooters open, and you can't help because he'd make the right pass every time. The 76ers would be able to get an asset like Andrew Wiggins, who isn't great, but he'd be a better fit than Ben Simmons in the 76ers offense. Wiggins and Embiid were once teammates at Kansas, and you'd also be adding a top five pick in this year's NBA draft, which like mentioned previously, could be LaMelo Ball, could be James Wiseman, could be RJ Hampton, it also could be Anthony Edwards. But I'd assume that if they're losing Ben Simmons, they'd go for a player like LaMelo Ball, who's 6'7 and plays the point guard position, similar to Ben Simmons, but is definitely not as great defensively, although what he lacks defensively, his offense in terms of being able to shoot is a far better fit than Ben Simmons, and it gives Embiid a clear number one option, as he's able to post up now, and if he attracts a double team, there's shooters on the outside. They'd have a lineup of LaMelo Ball at the one, Josh Richardson at shooting guard, Andrew Wiggins at the three, Tobias Harris at the four, and Joel Embiid, who is now the number one option, with Matisse Thibel, Korkmaz, and Al Horford all on the bench, which also could be moved around for other assets. And I just think it would be a better overall fit than what is currently clearly not working at the moment with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. The Golden State Warriors would have a lineup of Stephen Curry at the one, Klay Thompson at the two, Ben Simmons at the three, Draymond Green at the four, and he'd have to get back to 2015 Draymond Green, who shot 38% from the three to play alongside Ben Simmons, in my opinion, and they'd have Kevin Looney at the five, with Eric Pascal and probably some other off-season signings that are only inevitable for the Warriors who are looking to win an NBA championship. The Warriors lineup would be very dynamic and very interesting. Whilst Ben Simmons would play the small forward, he would play the point forward for this team. Steph would have less of the ball handling duties, but he'd be much more of a shooter, which is already hard enough to contain when he isn't running off screens like Klay Thompson. I'm not sure how Ben Simmons and Draymond Green would play with each other, but I think with the roster the Warriors have, they can find a match that works well for this team, with one of them sitting on the bench whilst the other one is in the lineup and doing work with Steph and Klay. 
Ultimately, I don't see the Golden State Warriors going all out during this year's NBA draft and selecting an 18, 19, or 20 year old rookie when they have a championship level team that is in their 30s and is already looking to compete and win NBA championships. To build up a rookie in their first NBA season and groom them to win an NBA championship in their first season is a pretty big step and I don't think the Golden State Warriors would be willing to take that risk when they have the ability to trade that pick away and acquire an all-star level talent. Whether that is Ben Simmons or it is somebody else, I don't think they'll go out there and draft a young player this season. But if they decide they will, I believe it will be James Wiseman as he's the guy that seems the most logical fit for this team. A big body, a defensive presence that can play the center position alongside Steph, Clay, Wiggins and Draymond. And that's basically it. That's the Golden State Warriors and what I believe they'll do going into next season. Obviously, they have a lot of options they can do. They can draft a player. They can trade for an all-star. They can just go with their current team and see what they can do with a young piece like James Wiseman. But it's going to be really interesting how the Golden State Warriors manage and go through everything next season. They're still one of the better teams in the NBA when healthy. They're obviously up against the Lakers, the Clippers, and the other teams in the Western Conference. But without Kevin Durant, obviously, it leaves a little bit of a soft spot. But they've got a top five pick. They have the ability to trade away those pieces for an all-star caliber player, and that can be really exciting. And Ben Simmons, that would be fun to watch on the Golden State Warriors. But with that said, let me know what you believe they'll do. Let me know if you think they'll go after another all-star. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. It's been your boy, Nick Smith, NBA. I'm out. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.